Do you know what? New time limit. Let's go 45 minutes. How's that for spring? Let's see what's coming up. Anyone need a seat? <laughs> Hello, welcome back. Good to see you. It's Stuart here from my shop, The Woolpatch, a yarn fabric haberdashery shop here in Long Melford, Suffolk, UK. And yes, 45 minutes. Woohoo! Spring, it's all about new stuff, isn't it? New beginnings. And I love this time of year in the garden when you see all that lovely fresh green growth. And doesn't it grow so quickly? My lupins, I'll leave in the morning and I'll come back at the end of the day and <laughs> they've probably put half a foot or even a foot on in growth. Uh, absolutely love it. Oh, especially um, peonies. Has anyone got peonies and a fan of peonies? I mean, mind of like not half a metre already. Anyway, enough of that talk, let's go into it. A little make today that I will start the show off with. Sometimes it's not always about huge big garments, jumpers and cardigans. I'm going to show you the bunting that I introduced in the last episode. You can see it right up there. <laughs> in all its glory, it's my Jubilee bunting and it looks great. I loved making it and when I showed it to you on the last show and I was just showing you the panel and I'd made up the kits, I had no idea how popular they would be. Literally the whole lot went within a week. So I'm showing you this bunting now but I've got no more to sell you. Oh gutted, really gutted. But thank you for those who bought the panel and the kit. I hope you enjoy making it. Uh, it was so easy, but it, it was, it, it was, it's amazing how quick it went. When fabric comes to me, it comes on a bolt and panels come on the bolts all joined up. So you cut them up and sell them individually. And when the Jubilee bunting came, it came on a bolt and there are 16 on a bolt. So I cut them all up and packaged them all up as kits and they all went. I know. So that's the 16th there because I obviously kept one for myself because I had to make it up to show it to you. I think one of the biggest challenges of having a fabric and wool shop is, is getting the right amount in. Uh, so this bolt had 16 panels of Jubilee bunting. And I, perhaps when I was ordering it last year, because you order fabric six months minimum in advance, sometimes eight to 12 months. And you think, all oh, right, you've got to judge if it's going to sell or not. I don't know why, uh, because I suppose I wasn't really into the Jubilee spirit last year. Um, we'd just come out of lockdown. Um, so I just went, oh, I'll just have one. I thought 16 panels, because normally panels actually are hard to sell. I've got a lot of panels here hanging up there and I look um, like I've got some poo and I've some Bambi and they've been here for the, the whole five years I've been here. I think I've still got like 15 left. Um, yet some panels can fly out. I've never had a panel that flies out within two weeks. <laughs> um, phenomenal. So I'm, I'm looking back thinking, damn, why did I not order two bolts or even three bolts? Um, and that's the hardest part, is judging if something's going to be popular or not. If you could give me some tips on how to meet that challenge, I would be really appreciative of it. It's something that's really hard. And it goes the same for wool, uh, but with wool, you're only buying bags of 10 normally, or bags of five. So there's perhaps less of a risk. Um, but also with wool, you don't have to 
choose what you want six months in advance. The rep will come in and show you a new ball of wool uh, for a new line and they'll say that's coming out in, in a month and how much would you like? Or it's already out and you just see the yarn and you go, oh, I'll have, I'll have a pack of that and a pack of that. Whereas fabric, it is at least six months in advance. So you have to work out whether it's going to be a trend then, if it's still going to be a trend. So it, it's, it's very difficult. It's very difficult to work out. But I should have realized really that Bunting, Jubilee, the Queen, 70 years, it's a phenomenal reign that people would want bunting. So I perhaps should have ordered two, shouldn't I? So, oh. <laughs> But as I say, it, it is a challenge and uh, sometimes I've got it right, sometimes I've completely got it wrong, more often than not I get it wrong, but there we are, you don't know, do you? Uh, sometimes just the way it goes. But um, with this, I definitely got it wrong. But how lovely to see all that bunting just fly out within a week. I was like, no, I've just made the tutorial too. <laughs> um, but yes, so if you have got a kit and you want to know how to make it, then uh, look in the description below because you can see the tutorial, it's so easy. But there we are, that's something that I learn and I'm continuing to learn the longer I stay in business as a sole trader. Now, what else for Jubilee? <laughs> I have been cracking on with my window display. I introduced that to you in the last episode. So I thought, right, well, it's got to be a, a, the Union flag, hasn't it? Big Union flag with 70 in the middle to celebrate 70 years on the throne. Such a marvellous one. So I'm going to do it in wool, obviously, because that's the whole thing. Look at these. <laughs> Look at all these vaulted balls! So I've got them in red. Mm, I if I had this. Ooh! <laughs> that literally went everywhere! Look at those. Oh! And then white. <laughs> With all the felted balls that I'm going to put together to make the Union flag. Uh, have a look at this. <laughs> Um, it's really good fun to do. I'm doing a lot of felting and a lot of glue gunning because it's got to hang upright. Um, and I'm just a bit wary that um, they'll all be felted together, but it might fall down that way. So I'm, I'm glue gunning down lots as well. That's good. Um, one of my customers, Sue Friday from uh, Knit and Natter Friday. <gasps> Look at this. <laughs> She's made a crown for the window display too. Isn't that fabulous? She's put beads on. Oh, look at that. Wonderful. I've got Jean, uh, another customer who is making some guards, uh, the Queen's guards that stand outside Buckingham Palace, you know, ones with the black hats on. And she's going to make those. So I'm going to have uh, some Queen's guards either side of, of the crown and then my display of the Union flag uh, over the top of it. It's going really, really well. So very, very pleased with that. <sighs> Loads of events going on. The BBC are holding a big concert in the park on Saturday. Then the streets are gonna be closed on Sunday as we have uh, street parties all over the UK. Um, and as I say, we've got Thursday and Friday technically as bank holiday. So that's gonna be great fun. So that's the Jubilee. Right, let's talk about another spring item, new growth. My woad is growing for this year's Lavenham Blue Collection 2022. growing all those fresh green shoots coming up here we go now goes 
long and pointy. So here I am in the potting shed. Let's have a look at the woad. So it's just starting to come through now. I planted these literally a week ago. That's how quick it germinates and comes up. Uh, lightly sprinkled them on the top of the, the, uh, the soil and then just sprinkled some compost over so they weren't buried too deep. Um, and look, yes. So you can, see, you know if it's woad, you get these lovely two little leaves poking through, beautiful. Oh, it's so warm in here. Oh, let me show you my acquisition that I got off Facebook Marketplace. Look at that. It's a spinner. So I can put my hanks when I pull them out uh, and they sort of drip dry for about three hours. <laughs> I can put them in here. And it can spin it and be super dry and then when I do hang them out to dry well they pretty much are already dry so they'll only need to be about out for half an hour or so so that will that will speed up the dyeing process definitely remember with wool you can spin it as quick as you like it won't felt it's the tumbling action that makes wool felt if you spin it and it just goes round and round and round like you know in a far centrifuge um, it's not getting any um what do you call it rubbings and and bumping into each other's sort of things to to make the fibers cling to each other if it's just going round like that it'll spin dry and it's perfect so i can't wait to use this brand new they should be 189 pounds and i got it for 50 quid Hurrah to Facebook Marketplace. Oh, how beautiful are those little shoots? They're so tiny. <laughs> and they're in the potting shed and the way the sun moves around the potting shed during the day, you can see what, the, 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 even though they're so tiny, they're, they're leaning over to get the sun. Uh, so cute. So I've got to keep feeding those, uh, watering those, and they will be the blue for some of the Lavin and Blue 2022 collection. Can't grow enough to dye 90 hanks. So some of the woad is already processed and, and, and as a powder, I've bought that commercially. And some of it will be grown from my garden where I rip the leaves and do what we call fresh leaf uh, pigment extraction, woad extraction. Uh, so that will be great. And don't forget, yes, I'm new. We're doing so many new things for spring, new. Uh, we're doing uh, Madder as well. Uh, Madder uh, Norwich Red. Uh, fascinated to try that. So I will be videoing all my experiences of that so you can see my attempts uh, at how I get on with dying with Madder. Oh, now speaking about woad, many of you will know I have my own locally sourced yarn from fleeces I've found from a local farm and this year it's literally five minutes from my house at a local farm called Cloverfield and I get that spun up in Yorkshire and then I dye it myself but I can only do that in small batches and it gets uh, you have to book it so far in advance uh, so that takes a long time from 10 fleece I get about 80 to 90 hanks um, of wool so I also have to have commercial yarn and this is the sort of thing that indie dyers will use um, uh, from say Chester's, they're a wholesale wool supplier, Laxton's uh, are one, uh, Rooster Yarns, they're the three main ones, I would particularly say Chester is the, is the main one, but you'll probably see most indie dyers bases coming from one of those three companies. But as I was um, buying Zyber balls, um, you remember we talked about it oh, a couple of shows ago for this fabulous shawl. I was looking at the Shopper website and came across a whole section of commercial undyed yarn that they do for indie dyers. 
And one of the yarns that I've used from Chester's before is a classic four ply sock yarn, sock or, or, or shawl yarn. It will be 75% Blueface Leicester and 25% nylon, or it could be 75% Merino and 25% nylon. Um, and it's very popular, sock yarn is very popular. From Shopple, they have something very, very similar, but why I've chosen this one is because of its makeup. This is their commercial undyed sock yarn. It's 75% new wool, 25% biodegradable polyamide. So the name nylons just simply refers to the group of plastics known as polyamides. So Shopple have this 25% biodegradable polyamide. So let's try and investigate that further and see where that's coming from. Nylon is a man-made synthetic. Fossil fuels are used to make nylon. So your wool socks, when they're in landfill, will probably take four or five years to decompose. The nylon, however, probably at longer decades, 30 to 40 years. What I love about Shopple's website is right at the top there, you've got their menu and you've got yarns, felting instructions and so forth. And then you've got this transparency button and it just gives you so much information on their yarns. And I'm looking at it now. You can see uh, that they're explaining what it is. Um, Cause I don't know about you, but I'm finding it quite overwhelming with companies pushing the, the green side of things. There are There is organic, there is uh, cotton and gots, G-O-T-S. Um, it is, it's quite overwhelming. And, and, and how much do you push that to your consumers and, and, and customers like, like you? Is, is that what customers are wanting more of? Um, but then there's also argument to greenwashing that are companies just using that, slap it on to try and uh, uh, look good from that point of view. So it's, it's a very difficult field to, to, um, to walk through at the moment. Uh, and I'm struggling with that, with, with our conscience as well, and what should we be doing, but are companies just putting it on just to try and look good, but actually when you start digging down even more, perhaps they're not using it, but looking at this, it's phenomenal from Shopple, very open about what they're doing. So they'll explain their organic merino, which is this got G-O-T-S, and you keep scrolling, and then you come to their biodegradable polyamide section to the Amni Soul Eco technology. And it's this which is the biodegradable element of it. So let's take a look at the Amni Soul Eco technology. And after a bit of internet research, a company comes up called Folger, uh, and they're based in Italy. And when you scroll across their top and you look at their products, you soon find biodegradable polyamide. And it's exactly what Schuppel was saying. Amnisol Eco is the polyamide yarn with enhanced biodegradability, developed and produced by Solve and distributed by Folger. Um, Amni Sol biodegrades in around five years when disposed of in landfills compared to more than 50 years for synthetics. It goes on to explain how it does this to help the environment and how does it work and this will be the interesting thing. The chemical structure of synthetic fibres, generally speaking, does not allow for bacterial penetration which makes the degradation process more complex and slower. Amni Sol Eco, on the other hand, is produced using enhanced polyamide, which, under landfill conditions, facilitates access and digestion of waste material by bacteria, thus accelerating the biodegradation process. So don't worry, <laughs> your favourite socks aren't going to decompose in the drawer. <laughs> no, they will just keep going and survive for as long as, as your socks would. So your, your polyamide yarn is still going to be strong. It's still going to keep your socks strong and hard wearing so you don't lose the ankle or, or the toe. But you know as soon as it goes into landfill and it goes 
in in there and it's all clamped down where there's very little oxygen present you know the bacteria are going to start eating and because of its makeup those bacteria here who want to <laughs> eating away can sort of go yay woohoo and get in there quicker and eat that polyamide up brilliant hey chuck your socks away if you do ever chuck your socks away i'm sure most of you will be darning those holes up because they're your beloved socks, but when they do find their way to landfill, then you know they are going to decompose much, much quicker. And that, to me, I think is, is, is great, isn't it? So, it will be fun to see how the woe takes with this and how it dies up. Uh, and as always, I'll keep you updated on that, and I'm sure there'll be a video of me dying it, and we'll see how it does. So I'll have some commercial yarn dyed, by me and very soon yes we will have my locally sourced yarn that's all done by me dyed with woad exciting times right yes shall we go into it yeah guess the year and i think it's a very topical one considering all our chat about crowns and bunting <laughs> Your Majesty. <laughs> oh, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Oh, ma'am as in jam, not as in arm. Yes, not ma'am. Ma'am. Ma'am as in jam. Um, right, well, <laughs> you, you kind of know which decade, but don't be fooled. Could be one or two years really couldn't it i know many of you love this feature and you often say oh i was one year out well are you going to be spot on for this one or are you going to be one year out i'm sure it won't take long for you to lock in especially as you know the decade already what are you going to go for anyone know the designer shout it out i knew you'd get it knew you'd know a phenomenal British designer, Norman Hartnell. Sir Norman Hartnell was a leading British fashion designer and was well known for designing for the ladies of the royal family. Phenomenal catalogue. Some of the dresses that he designed for Margaret too. Just wonderful, wonderfully stylish. Uh, that is a classic one. So he designed the coronation dress. And when you research it, I think he said there were like uh, 10 or 11 designs um, that he did for it. Um, and that's the one. Right. If you're unsure of the year, I can, I know some, I can see you. You're like, oh, uh, uh. you've got time to think about it, though I would always go with your gut instinct. Don't do that humming and hawing like what Fizz did. Uh, and she's like, oh, she changed halfway through and, and uh, she should have stuck with her first gut feeling because that was the right answer. She's like, damn, I shouldn't have changed. <laughs> right. Let's move on. Uh, with all this extra time we've got. It's brilliant, isn't it? Let's move on to some shop news. So we clocks have gone forward, haven't we? Spring forward, yes. Yeah. So the days are now eking out, lots of light getting warmer, it starts to get quiet at the shop because customers are outside in the garden doing all that new growth and getting it ready for the summer. So they tend to stop knitting. The fabric keeps us going and, and people do tend to sew during the summertime, but with regard to knitting, a lot of the customers just stop. But some people do and some people then want cottons. Now, I don't do much cotton at all. It's not like in Europe where cottons are a big thing, like the Mediterranean countries where they knit a lot of cotton because they want to wear it out on the beach on a lovely summer evening or in the garden. Maybe it's time to get one brand of cotton in and see how it does. I've approached so far all my British companies or companies who have a distribution base in the UK. Rowan, have a cotton. Summerlight DK. I have also got Lang Yarns, a Swiss company who I've just started to get 
into but their distribution company is based in the UK so it's really easy to get a hold of made with a they're both Egyptian cotton the Rowan is normal cotton the Lang is mercerized so it has got a bit of a sheep and I know I'm bamboozling you with all these words I'm actually going to try and do a video soon on uh, natural cotton combed cotton mercerized cotton and gassed cotton who knows what they all are I kind of got a feeling I kind of know what combed is no idea on gassed yet and mercerized I think so um, but I'll have to do a bit more research when I do the video um. but um some some of these words they just bamboozle us have you got any recommendations remember I just want one cotton at the shop just a trial um and what do you think of cotton do you knit with cotton there's a lot of is it like would you say old hearsay folk talk that cotton not many people like cotton because it sags heavy doesn't really sort of it's just ugh, doesn't have perhaps a shape to it or a what do you call it a drape uh is that still true do you find that when you have washed your cotton you wear it again has it increased in size has it dropped let me know your thoughts if you have knitted with cotton and what you think and I shall trial it. Give it a go. Write other shop news. <gasps> More crazy zebra balls in stock. Woohoo! Give it to you, this is done. Yeah, this is done all right. We are through our repeat and we'll never repeat. We will happily walk out the door. Come on. Break it up now, break it up. There we are. Six new colours of Crazy Zauber Balls. You could buy them individually to make a pair of socks. They will make one Zauber Ball, will make a pair of socks. Or you could buy them as the kit for this, where you have two Zauber Balls and then your five balls of merino. So that's new yarn there. Oh, and another new yarn from Rowan. Felted tweed colour. only eight colors currently in the range so we've got all eight and yes Irene <laughs> has already knitted something up you could probably see it behind me with Peggy there Peggy, come forward. This pattern is from the accompanying pattern book. 
This one is called Mist by Kim Hargreaves. And in the book, it's done in one colorway. Can you see? So in the book, it's done in that colorway. Photographed in Amethyst 026. You can kind of see some of those colors there. It's very difficult to see some of the colors on the ball. Uh, for example, this is color 21, and it you wouldn't know that there was a, a pink in there. You really do have to open it up. So it can be one of those yarns where I think you're like, oh, how does that, uh, you, where you always hear that question, oh, how does that knit up? But you can on here with the way it's spun. So there's your your royal blues into your greens and you can probably see it more yeah open it apart a bit it's an, certainly an interesting design it's caused quite a debate in the shop with customers i love that asymmetrical look and some going "Ooh, that's a bit of a weird look <laughs> it's on the huh <laughs> As uh, uh, many a, a Suffolk and Norfolk person would say, it's on the ha, huh? <laughs> on the wonk, it's not level. But you can see the ombre beautifully. Look at that. And as I said, the ombre is, uh, is probably gonna make some people go, oh yes, love it. And for some of you, it might make you just go, no, Felted tweed should be a solid colour, but it's, it's a, uh, it, well, I love it. It's just, it sits so well. Irene, again, you've excelled yourself. She is such a quick, skilled, talented knitter. Um, and uh, it's just, yeah, just great. This has not been blocked. Literally just been knitted and Irene gave it back to me and as always I like to show you straight away This is where I think the yarn is going to be really clever When you have two colors, so they've used two colors of the felted tweed color So you get the motif changing colors as it goes up, but you also get the background changing color as it goes up and ombres. But I think you could do that with a solid color as well. So you'd have perhaps your motif in the changing color and then the background with a solid color, probably typical with a jumper. Uh, take a look at the Jennifer Steinglass work. Now I think felted tweed color would be great with that. Look at that lovely fern one, superb, pattern motif that you could use as the felted tweed color, but then you'd have a solid color for the rest of the yoke. So that's a, a, a potential way of using this yarn. But yes, eight colors, felted tweed color in a light ombre. Basically the felted tweed as an ombre. Another great from you, Irene. Thank you very much. She's such a great knitter. Uh, talking about finished makes, let's go from Irene's finished make to your finished makes in the gallery.
if you are posting a picture of your finished object on Instagram, uh, if you could just add our hashtag, the wool patch to your list of hashtags I could just add us to the bottom that would be great and I could find it if not as I say you can email me uh, to the address below or you can DM me on Instagram and uh, and I can add it to the next gallery it would be lovely to see how good was that gallery again lovely to see your work and James lovely to see some of your work back in there do you know what? I was getting worried because the last gallery there was nothing from James like oh, this is unlike James he's he's knitting or or or, or sewing all the time <laughs> bless him but uh so lovely to have you back in the gallery James and lovely to see so much of your work thank you for taking the time to either email me or to um, post using the hashtag and thank you for taking the time to put in that extra information too you'll send me the pattern designer and then the yarn used and that really helps it really helps to inform people if they're like oh I love that pattern and they go I want to do that they can and they actually like the yarn all the information is there for them so thank you for taking the time um, and it's a lovely feature when I look I'm looking at the comments uh, from our last video you, you always write. Thank you so much for writing lovely things. I love the conversation after a vlog is published and, and how the show continues uh, after it's been published. Um, Carol says, uh, love the bunting. Uh, thanks for doing these videos and keeping us cheered up. Oh, and lots of finishes in the gallery. All wonderful. Thank you, Carol. Uh, David, uh, there's David. Thank you so much for featuring me again in your gallery. Uh, he's a, a, a big crocheter uh, and he, who is a designer as well. If you like crochet, then go on to Ravelry uh, and check out his designs. The link is also down below. Uh, Memi there, I've recently discovered your channel and I'm thoroughly enjoying binge watching your excellent content. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, and if you binge watch and you go right back, you'll see early formats uh, of the show with me and Anya. Um, uh, and you can see her as the pro. I was a bit, <laughs> it was a bit wooden in the early days. There's Fizz there, there's Marie, there's Teddy, uh, there's Lewis. Um, oh, Lewis has one for saying, oh, can you squeeze a few more minutes at the end? Well, there you are, Lewis. Look, 45 minute show now, rather than half an hour. Um, thank you for your comment. Uh, Margaret there, oh, who, who can't wait for the knitting festival in Edinburgh. Um, yes, Edinburgh Yarn Festival. I think they had, didn't they have a rest uh, because of COVID? Uh, Rob, who had been to the Shetlands, <gasps> Have any of you gone to the Shetlands? Because we were talking about that last episode. And I hope that information on Jameson's and Jameson's and Smith, Ting made me laugh. He said, how many more times could you say Jameson's in one video? <laughs> oh dear. Um, and of course, Fizz, Fizz, love your messages. <laughs> um, and how Fizz comments as the show goes on. I love that idea. I've now started doing that myself with videos um, that uh, are, are, are long and you and you can't remember it to, to write a comment right at the end. Um, Lady Jackie, um, who was uh, 1979 with the guest the year, the closest that she's been. Um, uh, and uh, yes, yeah, so many lovely comments, but many of you write about the gallery. Tracy says, love the gallery as usual, all such lovely makes. Love so many of the projects, so much talent. Uh, exactly, here, here, and Deborah uh, as well. Another lovely vlog. Thank you for taking the time to make the vlog. Love making them. It's, as I said, it's part of the shop, but it's also part of, of my hobby uh, and the enjoyment I get in the evening of making the vlogs and editing them and packaging them all to make a lovely little show for you. Now, talking about the show, let's get back to Guess the Year and see if we can finalize it and see if we can get you right. Have you finalized it? As I said, I gave you a big, big tip. One of two years. Ready? So the year for the wonderful Her Majesty in her coronation dress, 
1953. <laughs> yes, yeah, so obviously she ascended the throne in 1952, but her actual coronation and this dress was 1953. Well done. Well done, you. I can see you jumping for joy. Who got, who got one year out? <laughs> well, do you know what? As it's a special show, I'll let you have it. You were all right. <laughs> oh, brilliant. I do, I do love it. It's great fun. Great fun, isn't it? Ah, right. Talking about fun as well. I'm getting so into my sewing. <gasps> I bought some goodies. Let me show you. <laughs> Anyone need a seam? <laughs> I can't go wrong with these, can I? Look at these fabulous things. So I have this fabulous L shape. Look at that. And these, so you've got all your markings on there. It's massive. What is that? 24 inches by 14. Basic straight one. 60 centimeter fashion ruler. So I've got one for the hip curve. There's the hip curve. And I've got one for the arm curve. So you can just see slight there for when you're doing your sleeve and your arm. And then I've got one for the leg curve. I don't think I'll be doing any trousers or jeans, but you never know. But for sure, um, this arm one will really come in handy. And this long one too. <laughs> yeah, clunk, it's all falling. This, I've got no room, I'm just taking it all up. But I want to try and make a shirt not following any pattern. I've started following some of these um, tailor channels on YouTube that are literally making their shirts the proper way with just measurements. So you measure uh, this for the shoulder, you measure this for the arm, you measure this for the back, and then you get your rulers, join all the lines up, and then cut it out. <gasps> How exciting is that? So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, and, uh, and that's just in time, because we're gonna go sewing be mad over the next 10 weeks. Yes, series eight. Woohoo! All so excited, and that means Anya and Ting are back with me for Unpicked, the weekly review show. <gasps> no, where we talk about each episode. And Carol is back with me for All Gathered Up, where we talk technical about each show and look at a skill or a technique or a tool and talk about that. So 10 shows, 10 shows of Unpicked, 10 shows of All Gathered Up, 20 shows, weekly shows, fabulous. Sorry if you don't like sewing, maybe, can you mute? I don't know whether you can mute notifications <laughs> in YouTube, um, but if you do like sewing and sewing talk, fabric talk, skills talk, then all gathered up and unpicked is for you. Oh, I forgot to show you uh, what else I treated myself. Look at these proper tailor scissors. Look at the blade on that. Oh, and, and oh, that's ASMR. Although he's walking upstairs. <laughs> Stop walking. Shh. That's a proper bro. Yes, I'm up for using a rotary cutter, but all the classic couturiers and tailors still use the scissors, so that's got to mean something, isn't it? So oh, that's really nice. Oh, I can't wait to use those. Oh boy, wow. And we covered some topics today. If you <laughs> look at this desk, you'll see it looks like right state. Still love that. Thanks, Sue Friday. Oh, can't wait for that display. Oh boy, half an Three quarters of an hour of whooshed by. How is that, hey? Oh, you know, it's just been wonderful. I think it's worked quite well. So cheers to you all. Thanks for being with me for these 45 minutes and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.